Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of an Aussie Farming in the Philippines. G'day you bastards, and hello fucking trolls. How are you? Good, thank you. Right, that's enough of the trolls. Right, so here's Chick Chick's pegs. So Bongo Bro brought a fluorescent orange down the other day. The other day, mate. So uh, this is about their fourth coat I've given them now. Shake, 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 shake. So just, just doing now, it's just the top areas. An extra coat again, so that they're really nice and thick. You know, as thick as them fucking behal fat farming fuck farmers, as they say. Right. So look at that, nice, nice and thick. Nice and thick. And keep shaking the can, guys. Keep shaking your can. As much as you can, shake the can. Hey, okay? you didn't know it, but I was a poet. All right, we'll come back and give another hit later. So, um, just letting them dry, about half an hour. Come back and hit it again, so that it works quite sexy, Lexi. Sexy. Right, so what's the hobby farmer doing today? Well, the hobby farmer has pulled out again the electric chain sharpener for the gasoline petrol chain saw. So this is it. So we used this the other day with um, Bob when they cut the um, the supports, the wooden supports down, you know, on the fence. Those ones that run the fucking, you know, those ones, ones sideways on the angle. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the pressure cleaner out and I'm going to give it a pressure clean down the bar, the chain, and um, I'm going to stick it onto the machine here. Now this will all be set up right, set up to the right settings. And what I'll do is I'll use this and sharpen the blade. Then I can put the blade back on again, keep it loosey juicy, and this is all ready to go next time. Put it back into um, storage. So if you look after things, guys, they'll last. And keep the fuel clean all the time. When you're not using it, empty out the fuel. You know? There's a debate between when when I was doing um, small engine repair. You know, oh, fuck. God, put my arm on there and it fell down. I scared the shit out of me. There was a debate when I was doing um, small engine repair is that um, you drain the fuel tank and um, run the carburetor out. Now, they're saying, yes, that's all right for um, to, for four-stroke engines, for four strokes, but for two strokes, no, because your gasoline, your fuel, your petrol, okay, it's got the oil in it, which is your lubrication. So if you turn it off, you turn the fuel supply off and run the carburetor out dry, then that means that the piston is going to get hot just for those few seconds. Other people always say that, um, well, doing that also means that your um, your carburetor can dry out. So that means all the seals and everything will dry out and the O-rings and all that shit will dry out and it's not good. Some say if you leave the oil in there, oil in the two-stroke in there, the fuel will evaporate away and it leaves the oil behind. Well, that is true. I know that 100% sure. The amount of brush cutters that I had um, pulled the carbies apart because they had the brush cutters, they'd been using it, they just turned it off, stuck it up, and uh, they come out and pull it out a couple of months later. All the fuel has evaporated away. Now, fuel will fuck off and start to dry up and start to smell yucky after three weeks. Three weeks, guys, seriously. So, if you look at something that's been in storage for the last X amount of months, you smell it, you take the fuel cap off and you smell it. It's like, oh, God, she's bad, that girl. Oh, I'm not going near her. So, it will evaporate out and all the oil that's in the tank will stay there and any oil that's in the carburetor will stay there as well. And that's where you get a gummed up carburetor, okay? And the, there's a little, little um, screens inside underneath the diaphragms. And that's the only problem is it's just oil, just pure two-stroke oil sitting there. So what we do is we just wash it all out, hit it with the air blower and clean it all out and she goes again. Sometimes you have to replace the um, the parts inside, but very rarely, very rarely. So what I'm saying is I don't believe that you, that running it for a long time, for the fuel out of the car be, will do that much damage. It will do a little bit of damage as they say, yeah, theoretically. But compared to leaving fuel in, and letting it evaporate away and going up your carby. Don't like that shit. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him over to the pressure cleaner, give it a full pressure clean down, and come back then and sharpen up this. Now this is the hydraulic one, this one. I'll put a link down below in the description. Oregon, they make the best shit out. Really fantastic. They even done the, the uh, chains, chains as well to the um, 
uh, was it the attachment that uh, Andrews Martin brought us the other day? So this here will go down onto an angle. Okay, I'll get this set. I have to put it over here so I can screw it down. So I can't get into it else with a screwdriver. And this will sharpen it right up to Mickey Mouse again. And then um, I'll put him back into the storage up on the rack with the other chainsaw. Right, let's get some work done, you bitches. Right, guys, so over to the pressure cleaner. Voila, look at that. So get it a pressure clean. They need it more. Give it a good hit with the CRC after you do it all. Blow, blow the air out, of course, first. Get the air blower out and blow all the water out. Then give it a good hit with CRC. Guys. Now, the wood boss, I'll tell you, it's a bloody good size saw for a farm, guys. It's uh, nice and lightweight that you can use it quite easy. I like the big bass that the chick brought me. Fuck my dog, that's a bloody weighs a ton. And not only does it weigh a ton, it's got a decompression valve and there's that much fucking pressure on the engine. Seriously. But God bless her, you know. I have a good wife who looks after me like that. Got to be happy, guys. Right, I'm going to get all these clean, guys, then blow them all down. Right, compressor done. So, just a matter of giving a, give it a blow up. Okay. Get all your chunky bits out, you know. Do that to your bed sheets each morning, you'll be all right. Oh. Right. oh, talk about bloody fuel going up, eh? So I don't know where you are in the world, in, because life's fucking better in the Philippines, they say. Who are they? Are they the ones that say smoking's bad for you? Fucking wankers. So, gasoline, fuel as we call it, petrol, in Australia, petrol has just gone up 12 pesos a litre. Today, same with diesel, about 17 pesos or something like that. Now, for all you Aussies out there, the current exchange rate is 36 pesos to the Australian dollar. Now, this has gone up 12, so that's one third. So that's 33 cents a litre in one fucking hit. In one hit. 33 cents Australian in one hit. Seriously. Seriously. Is that right? Hmm. Right, so that's all done. Nice and Mickey Mouse, look at that. So I can give this a spray with some CRC now. Always give it a CRC spray. This is what I'm saying when you say, when you put your chain away, when you finish using it at the end of the day, loosen off the chain so you haven't got weight on this sprocket here. This is what I see get damaged a lot, is this sprockets here, okay? A lot I see that happening. Right, so back to gasoline. So, so gasoline's 12 pesos, that's, I said that's 30, 33 cents, 35 cents Australian in one fucking hit. In one hit. You know, it's like incredible. When I went to Saudi Arabia to live back in 2003, um, gasoline there was um, 0.10 of a real. 0.10 of a real. It's like fucking a couple of cents a litre, you know, if. And the problem that um, when, I, when I spoke to one of my captains, I said to him, I said, Carla, geez, your fuel's bloody cheap here, mate. And he goes, chief, he says, used to be for free. Then they charged 10.10 .10 real. He said, country up in arms. I said, you're fucking kidding me. I said, you want to see what we pay in Australia, for Christ's sake, you know? Now, when I went to, uh, I forget what it was in Oman. I went to Oman for a year after Saudi. But when I went back to, um, went to the Middle East, to Qatar, and I spent eight years in a Qatar, as um, we were paying there, I had a Silverado, okay, and they have a big fucking tank on them, big fucking tank. You know, them 5.3 litre Silverados, big fucking engines, big tanks. Now, that used to cost me, I think it was about 50 dirhams to fill up with fuel, you know, which is fuck all. Absolutely, or 50 reals, absolutely bugger all. And um, I think the most, I think I used to put in about 50 every fortnight or something like that. You know, it was like, absolutely, it was a joke. It was ridiculous. When I went to, uh, I think we're paying, I think we're paying 70, 0.75, a um, 0.75 real a litre, okay? So that's two litres for one and a half reals, which is 50 cents. 
Now, that was 75 cents. Then when, when Qatar went and got that fucking football game, as they call football, a soccer game, well, everything went through the roof. The gasoline went up to a uh, uh, real, one, 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 one real per litre. You know, that went up overnight, fucking bang. Big hit, 25%, bang, hit it. Water, you know, water was like, seven, same thing, it was 7 cent, 70, 70 points, point seven zero. that went up to a full real. Everything went up 25, 30% overnight getting that fucking soccer game. So we were playing a real a tank. Now my tank was 80, 80 litres, I think it was, so that was 80 real to fill up the tank then. When I went to uh, the UAE to live, I said, come on, chick, let's go to the UAE. Getting sick of this fucking place. And uh, we go there. Well, the UAE doesn't have any oil refineries, okay? They don't have. They actually make a lot of oil there, but they export it. And they import all the gasoline, diesel. It's all imported. So we are paying then was um, 1.5. So we're paying 50% more what we were paying in Qatar, you know? But when you look at the prices here, they're like, fuck my dog. You know, fancy, the fuel is just going up through the roof. Now, I'll tell you what, then Russia's better win that fucking war, I tell you, so they can get all that oil flowing again and the gas flowing and all the wheat flowing and all that bloody stuff. Come on, Putin, mate. Get your troops moving. Get them all rallying. Rah, 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 rah. One thing you never talk about on YouTube is politics, OK? Don't talk about it. Politics, religion. You talk about trolls like fucking big fat failing fucking farmers who come up with these stupid fucking things like, um, oh, the Aussie farmer's got so many people employed on his farm. No wonder it's all manicured so nice. And then he'll go on to another channel where he's got a troll account. It's called John, J-O-H-N. Yes, yes, Hog, it's easy to work you out, you stupid fat fuck. Now, what this person, John, says on the troll channels is what the, the Hog says on his live chats. So you pick it up straight away. You know, you pick up when you're reading that and you listen to his to his um, live chat, you know that's the same fucking person saying the same words. So, um, and there he says, oh, the Aussie farmer can't even afford employees. You know, no one will work for him and um, he hasn't got money for staff. Well, make up your mind, have I got three fucking full-time staff or have I got none? What is it, hog? Oh, fuck, fuck. God, you piss me off, you fat fuck. And stop, stop making up all these troll account names, John. John, seriously, seriously, you know, like, seriously, John, you know, like, fuck me, you could have had it, could have made a name like Bertha or something, like, or Cecil, or Cyril, you know, like, hello, I'm, my name's Cyril. <laughs> oh, if your name's Cyril, we're not hanging shit on you, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, you're infectious. Right, I'm going to get the CRC out, I want to get this chain sharpened, because that's, that's my troll talk for the month, we can only... I was told by my advisor, stay right away from the trolls. But once a month, I'm going to lash out at the fat, failing farmer troll. Or should we call him John? Go and have a look at these. And, you know, that, John is the same one who, who mentioned, oh, the, um, the triple F will go well. Because, look, this is what's in this fucking po troll post. He said, look how many hamburger joints there are. There's Wendy's, there's Minute fucking this, there's that, there's that. And he named them all, so he said, so it would have to work. And I thought, what's this fucking idiot going on? And then when I read some more posts, and he's coming out with stuff that he says on his channel, live streams, then I knew John is Triple F. Go and have a look. Have a look for John. It's not John Dickhead or anything like that. It's just straight John. Go and have a look, guys. Seriously, you'll see what I'm saying. You'll read it. Now you got it in your head, right? Now you got it in your head that John is the Triple F. You'll say... That is him. Look, look, he's, look what he's saying here. Ah, fucking fat country bunkin. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Country bunkin. All right, let's get some work done. All right, guys, so this is how easy it is. When you pull the handle down, hydraulics here will close this up on you. There's no manual on this one. So you get the extra good version. That's it. It's how quick and easy it is, guys. Quick and easy it is. Now they say give it little, little ones, so you're not overheating it. Look at that, nice. Nice and tight. Right, let's keep going. 
Right, so that's done, guys. So when you flip the chain around, just undo this underneath here, and you just flip it around in for the next one, the right setting, and flip it back with the uh, teeth going the opposite way. So that's all done now. So what I'll do is I'll give that a good soaking, some CRC, throw them back onto the bar. The bar's already been soaked. And remember, keep it loose. Keep it loose and full of juice. Right, guys, so all cleaned down, all done with some CRC. Make it nice and sexy, Lexi. Now... Put your chain on, very easy. Put the bar on first, sit it in there, or normally won't fall off. All right, wrap your chain over the back and droop it over the front. Now your cutting teeth are to go forward, okay? Forward are your cutting teeth. Forward. All right, some people that put them on back to front, well if they haven't been shown how to do it, then it's understandable, it could happen. You know, it's like it does happen. So it's all spinning nicely through the sprocket, and the clutch system, look at that, see? Nicely, 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 nicely. Throw your cover on. Shirt cam. Right. Throw the cover on. Where's the hole? Well, we should have shaved it first, he said. All right. Go on, on you go. Now, keep your chain loose, guys, okay? Take all the pressure off your chain so it's not on your sprocket. Take all the pressure off, all right? Tighten them up a little bit more than that. Okay, so it's nice and loose still. There's no pressure on it. There's no pressure on this. This is moving nicely. Right, that's all you want to do. Now, when you store it, and you put it back you know, up in the cupboard now, or wherever you're going to put the bar, so in the back of the ute or whatever, right? It's ready to go. So when you're ready to go, you want to start using, it's just a matter of taking them out, checking your oils again for your lubrication, for your cha chain oil, fill it up full of its two-stroke. Now, tighten it up, quite simple, right? Lift up the bar, lift it up. See it moves out a little bit? Lift it up. Okay, make sure you, it's tight. All right, still moving. Now remember, when they heat up, they do expand. All right, holding it up, tighten. Voila. So there you go. When you finish, the end of the day, just loosen this off. Okay. Now see how that just that's fallen down. Now it's taking all the pressure off off the clutch. Taking all the pressure off, and just give it a little bit of a turn. Okay, there you go. Alright, off the shirt cam. So there you go guys. That is now ready to store. Now, that's how we do it in the Western world. How other countries do it, and I'm not going to say where I'm standing at the moment, is they have a, that much slack down in here on their chain, it's incredible. They have so much slack in. And when they're cutting these boards out, they take the rakers out. They fold down on the rakers. They fold these right down. So it's just the cutters on there. You can buy them like that, but uh, here they're just too fucking skinty. And so I'll just buy a chain and hit it with a grinder. But all that heat softens the metal. But the thing is, just leave it stored just like that. Right, well, there you go, guys. So I hope it's been an informative video today about looking after your chainsaw, how to service it after use, how to sharpen the chain, how to reinstall the chain and put it on the proper way. All right, guys, I'm going to say TTFN. Have a look at some videos up here from our subscribers. Up here, up here, up here, up here. And thank you very much for watching. Remember, share, subscribe, or buy. Okay? And if you buy, got to be happy with that. See you later, guys, from the Aussie farm in the Philippines. Bye-bye.